began in the UP. Luckily, I was very young at that point still, because when I got done with all the education stuff, I did what I wanted to. You know, I didn't stay with my job in Washington, D.C., making this much money. I went and took a job here, and I got some wonderful children, and I have uh, a <coughs> lifetime of memories crafting and doing my profession. Um, so I'm a strong supporter of education. If you think you're going to make your living on trapping, I wish you luck, but you better have a site. Okay? Now, uh, up there in the U.S. Asa Lennon, if you ever seen one of my videos, uh, I give him the utmost credit because when I was downstate, I thought I was a great fox trapper, and when I went up and do as the Romans do up in the UP, you're a great fox trapper down here. You're not going to be a great fox trapper, a coyote trapper up there until you modify to a different environment. So if you ever get a chance to go up there, just remember it's a little different. It's a wonderful thing, though, because you guys are used to a lot more competition here, and I don't really worry about competition as much when I'm up there. Um, some of my first beaver experiences were literally two, it was two day check, I believe, back in those days, too, and would be being dropped off with the canoe, and then they would get me two days later. And it was just an unforgettable experience, and you can sink a canoe with beaver or not. Okay, and you also. Uh, I want to mention that when you're tracking <coughs> beaver and otter, make sure you get the mink and the muskrat and everything up. Um, because you're going to get just as much, depending on you know what stream, what area. It makes it a lot more enjoyable when you're checking. Hey, I'm going to get a 330. If I have to branch it off, I'll branch off the 330. It'll be beyond my arm's reach with debris and feathers and force it out of it's more than that, I will actually find and do like a bottom edge set on the feeder stream. Uh, but I'll try to get a 330 in that area if it's possible. Um, otherwise, I will try to find another but a, another uh, slide or another area where it looks like they were working the banks. But I'll try to get three or four traps. And the reason is I'm a firm believer that you need to go to that, that you got to set those traps with the confidence that you're going to get the beaver that are there because on the second and the third night, there's something. Those beavers know something's happened by you being there. They're smart enough for that. I'll give them that much credit, even though they're not the hardest animal to, to trap. So don't expect in your plan, once you find and catch those beavers in a couple days, do yourself a favor. One, for conservation. If I'm wrong, you're leaving some beaver for uh, the <coughs> The other thing is, you can get those traps in another place and put them to good use. Now, I know everybody has a budget. Depends what point of life you're at and what you do. I'm showing the number five Bridger coil. That's my preferred trap. When I was in the UP and I was younger, don't get me wrong, the number three Bridger can catch a beaver in the front foot. Can even catch a beaver in the back foot, but not quite so lightly. So, if you're trapping coyotes, just remember, you can take those traps and still become a beaver trapper without having to put back to the 330s and uh, the 5s and 750s. And okay, it's just my preferred trap. 750 is a wonderful trap. Once a guy's got 50 of these, he doesn't need a bunch of 750s. Okay, so uh, anybody, whatever, if you're going to use a trap, buy it specifically <coughs> for beaver, buy a CDR, buy a uh, Bridger number 5, buy the launch one. They all work and it's a matter of preference. Now I'm going to go into a little detail and help me out here, Mike. When that trap's going down on our caster mound or slide or wherever we set this foothold, bedding the trap just like on land, this trap not rocking and all that good noise is one of the most important factors. Don't do you any good to do all that work of finding where the beaver is and have him come up and that trap flip over or not fire properly. It's just a lot of reasons. Okay. And usually, just simply wedging in, you know, the soil under the water will bed a trap pretty easy, much easier than uh, dry ground. Another pointer is, I don't even remember who told me, it could have been Mike, it could have been Mark Spencer, uh, could have been one of the guys that are gone. Um, but where you have your caster mound, you got your trap, trap's going to be uh, underwater depending uh, anywhere from two to 
to four or five inches, okay? If that base, where, if, and that's gonna be part of your choice, the nice thing, to get that height, you can mound dirt up if it's a little deep, okay? Now, last point at the set is, when the beaver's swimming in, okay, you put a stick in front of where your trap is so that it makes him put his front foot down, okay? That'll just force him to do it. And whether that's the ticket that allows me to catch them consistently, and I think Andrew can vouch for the method that when I drop traps in, I'm typically gonna catch them every time I set them or I don't set them. And it's more than one. I'm setting these multiple traps and consistently getting the catching out of there and go. Now, once we've got our trap, the next most important thing, besides all the stuff we've done to that point, now you gotta remember too, this whole process, I'm out there so I'm having fun checking and shooting ducks the next day, checking and floating down, catching fur, okay? I'm not spending that much time doing this. I'm two minutes making my set, okay? It's getting to be three and four minutes as I get into my 50s, but uh, hopefully I can still do it when I'm in my 60s and 70s. This beaver traffic can be quite strenuous. Back up for just a second. You said you'll put a stick down to catch one. But what do you mean? Where do you, where Not do you to catch them. You want it to stab him oh, okay. in the chest so he puts his feet down and get in the trap. Thanks for helping me make it clear. Um, who's going to tell me what's the most important thing I got to do next? Yes. Now, and is it important? And I wish I would have met Mike 20 years earlier. I wish I'd have met a lot of people 20 years earlier. So hopefully I'm going to save you guys some trouble. And when I say trouble, you might still get the beaver if he pulls up, but Haley, my daughter, didn't want to check as many traps when one time I thought 14 gauge wire would cut it, and we had to dispatch five beaver up on the banks, okay? 16 gauge wires out of this hemisphere, and if you got 20 pound or 10 pound beaver, maybe 14 gauge will work, but where I come from, 14 gauge wire don't cut it. So if you're gonna save some money because someone says you can hold them on 14 gauge wire, forget it. Okay? Now, so, this is answering, raise your hand where you had the question on the cable. All right, I prefer the wire because I just don't want to punch with the cable. Raise your hand if you use cable. All right, so I'm gonna tell you how I use my wire, and I'm, I'm not gonna guess how you use cable. I'm gonna ask if one of these gentlemen could just fill us in on the benefits of cable so that you can make the choice. So the wire, and you learn every day. I got these from Ron, uh, Ron Marsh many years ago at some national, and he's went through three or four changes in design. Well, yesterday, a guy's like, I'm putting with some cable trying to cut it, and finding my wire cutters, he's like, use this. So in the design, you can now cut cable and wire. It's a J-hook tool. So, you learn something every day. Now I gotta replace my Jayco tool that I had because mine's still the old design that doesn't have white. Now, here we'll just show you it works. But this is an interesting thing and I want to hear the answer on the uh, uh, cable. There's two ways. You can have this wired off, or, all right, up on shore, no matter what, you need a stake, whether it's a cable stake or it's a uh, rewrap, okay? That stake, here's the water, okay? <coughs> we live in Michigan. I don't think it matters where you live. The water's here today. Tomorrow it's gonna be up here, okay? So, don't drive your first stake in the ground here drive it up here, okay? So when the water goes up, you can wade out, pull your trap, and remake your set here, okay? It's gotta be an out of action and not having your net word. So I'm gonna take my wire. Now, when I'm out here, it may, I may be out here. I don't care if I gotta go over there. I'm gonna catch that monster. The main thing is, I'm gonna go out 
until I feel comfortable that I'm safe. I don't think it's too mucky. I don't think I'm going to go out. So I'm going to be in some area here where I still got this much weight. Okay? And if it's current, I'm going to throw the other alternative, the sandbag or something. The safety is the number one important. So I can drive that down. You're going to drive it in at that thing. You're going to make sure this is strong. So in other words, this stake, what I do is there's a hole somewhere in here that I push my wire through so that it allows me to go in before it gets the wire down. Um, I'll drive this in as far as I can, uh, you know, even below the water a little bit, so I'll stop. The most important thing, just like a cable stake with a traffic coyote, if you can pull that stake out, you got to get a different stake. The coyote's going to pull it out. So what I do is when I got the wire, I make sure I pull on that wire and it's not going to come out until I come back out here and pull it up. Sometimes I even, when the water goes up, if I don't have time to wait for it to receive, I'll have to recover my trap and come back and get this, okay? And it can be a real bugger. This system's downfall is, if you get a beaver, the water goes up, you may have to get a boat or something to come and get this. But that's the way life is. And I hope to learn a different anchoring system when I hear you guys. But this, We'll hold the beaver if it's secure. If you try to go cut a sapling that's green, you'll eat it. You know, it's not strong enough. This is hardwood ash. You can use maple, just something you can't chew, and it's not going to split when you're pounding. Okay? Now, so I'll be back here. I got it secured. Where the bank's coming down here, I will use some caution leaves and try to push that extra wire in the dirt to conceal it a little. I won't spend a lot of time. But the main thing is the, I'll take this, this trap, and this is called the grounder lock. So everybody envisions this wire out to deep water, right? And it's strong, because otherwise, and it's 11 gauge wire, not 14, because if it's 14, it's gonna be up on the bank, all twisted up. All right, if you guys can practice this, all you gotta do if you're, if you're not used to grounders, the same grounder I'm showing, you're going to set a foothold for muskrat, me, anything else, boom. You're going to set the foothold, except the Duke DP or a different DP. I'll set them on high ground. I don't want to have to carry a wet boom if I don't have to. Every foothold should be on a grounder in the water. This here slides down freely when the beaver swims out. He will swim out. He's going to be down on the end grounded if you do what I say, get in that depth of water. Okay? When he tries to come back, he can't come back. Okay? Sometimes you get supper, you'll see a duck float out there or something else and bend it up, but usually it's a beef, 99% of the time. One time, I held a 32-inch pike with me, caught by the bottom thing, so they're pretty strong. The pike's pretty tasty, I like it. It's bone. So, any questions on the traps in this set? Obviously, the wire's secured up on the high, the trap is bedded, beaver slides down, he's yours, okay? So that's our foothold set. <coughs> Obviously make sure you got your trap tag on it and uh, uh, always make a, a remake when you get it. I try to do the couple days like I said. And then obviously if I see all this sign and I don't get them in two or three days, go ahead and go a couple more days. Now, whether you go longer than that on some setup that you do really depends if uh, you, it's easy for you to get to. You live a, a half a block away and you know, Go ahead, leave them in and wait till they travel through. But if you gotta drive an hour and a half to get to your place where you're trying to trap beaver, you're not gonna wanna keep driving back if you're not catching nothing. And that's all more of a reason to, there's more than a reason. Remember I said the muskrat and mink pick those up in the coon? If you can, a coon season starts before a beaver. If you can, when you're scouting, go ahead and trap five, six coon out in where you're gonna trap your beaver. Because guess what's gonna happen if you don't trap those coon out? You, that beaver set in that trail is one hot coon set. And, and coon like beaver lure, and so does everything else. So if you take those coons sooner, you're gonna you get to do a little more scouting. So by the time you do get there with the trap on opening day of beaver season, you're gonna get it in quicker because you're gonna know where you're going. Plus you're gonna have the coon off the banks. So you're gonna carry beaver instead of coon. The other thing, Mike Banks colony traps, a lot of other guys do. Colony traps are a wonderful thing because in some areas where the beaver are, there's a lot of muskrat. And likewise, <coughs> that number five I showed you catches a muskrat. He don't go down the slide wire. He goes about that far. He's there smushed in the trap. Okay, so you will get incidental muskrats. 
And all you got to do to make sure you don't get those incidental muskrats is get the, a couple years ago, I heard they got $20 for everyone at an auction. Well, drop a colony on one side, drop a colony on another, another side, and you're going to catch a couple muskrats that would probably be setting off your, your set and put a pocket set in for me. You know, you're just carrying a little bit of extra gear and uh, catching a couple extra animals. And not only are you catching extra animals, you're probably catching the beaver before somebody else does because he's catching the muskrat and coon because he's bought a beaver trapper. So to be a good beaver trapper, you've got to be a mink trapper and a muskrat and a coon trapper. But all that's with the same character. Um, I don't know if anybody's seen Michigan Outdoors, but I'm a firm believer in this. If I'm going to drive an hour to check traps, I'm not going to pass up catching fox and coyote and everything else on the way to check. So when we were with Michigan Outdoors going to get muskrat and beaver, we stopped and got red fox and coon along the way. So our whole circle, we were checking traps and it was a whole lot more exciting. A couple months in every town in the UP, like Ironwood and uh, Marquette. And so I was just everywhere in the UP. Obviously now I've been 10 years in Northern Michigan. So, and basically the beaver in our area are all pretty much the same, except they're a little more shy down here and harder to find than they are up there. Um, but don't worry, if you don't get a chance to get up there, the beaver aren't going to disappear up in the UP. There's 50 mile sections with no roads and plenty of beaver. You know, the guys that are telling you, oh, when the beaver prices are high, they trap them all out by the road. They just never got in the canoe, like I told you in the beginning, how I floated the river for two days. You float the river for two days today, you do the same thing I did when I was 20 years old. And then you'll also learn skinning a hundred beaver is not a cool proposition. <laughs> that's when I gave up on flushing in the early days and guys like Mike, it's an art and they like to do it. And I continue to get top lot because I catch prime northern beaver and let guys like Mike take care of them. Uh, it's just amazing the great character that comes out of Michigan. I don't know if everybody knows John Graham and Mark June. They know Mark June, this is for sure he hasn't been here forever and He's just fine. I've seen him at the Nationals, and the guy's got a certain time to do things in his life, and you know, he just said to say hi to everybody when he sees me, and make sure you bring the lure, because I don't have it, you know, I won't be there. Um, but John Graham, you know, he's out in the West, and he's a youper, the Lennons, uh, Phil is on and on, the great trappers that come from this area. And I didn't even know, and I was talking to a customer yesterday about Russ Carmen. They said Russ Carmen actually comes from Michigan. So, well, we really chalk up just about all the great lure makers. So, we got a strong heritage here in Michigan with trapping, and let's hope we can uh, pass it on. And it's just wonderful. I mean, I just the happiest thing here is to see all these young guys here. And you know, I we have a manufacturing firm, 100 employees. I love to hire trappers because they got enthusiasm, and fire in the hole. You hire these guys that sit inside all the time and play these games and stuff. It's like talking to a uh, brick wall so keep your kids out in the great outdoors and thanks for coming and make sure to stop by uh, uh, get a free lure video thank you